When it comes to which Buddhist magazines to read, you may be overwhelmed by a number of choices, but no worries, that's why I'm here today. So if your goal of Buddhist practice is to have a more happier and joyful life, please know that there is a go-to Buddhist free online magazine that you never want to miss. In this video, I want to introduce you such a dreamlike magazine that is free and available online. I want to give you the details of it, how to access it, and how to read it. And if you watch till the end, Toward the end, I will give you the bonus information that makes it easier for you to have an access and read it. So please stick around till the end. Here's my go-to Buddhist magazine. Please drum roll. Living the Lotus, which is free and available online. So I recommend this not only because it's inspirational and informative, but also it's not overwhelmingly long. It is only like a 12, 12 pages. So the question is, what's in it? So the Living the Lotus normally has like a 12 pages and have five contents. The first content you will see is a piece of Buddhist writing by a founder of this publisher, Buddhist organization called Risha Kosakai. And it's followed by second content is a Dharma talk by Richard Kosakai's current president, Nishiko Niwano, and his essay seems to be the main part of the whole magazine. And the third content is a member's personal story of life struggle and how it was overcome by their Buddhist practice. So as I will explain more soon, I found this personal Dharma journey very, very powerful and inspirational for my own Buddhist practice. And I hope you find it very helpful as well. And then, as a fourth content, you will have a reflection essay by another Dharma instructor of Risha Kosakai. And then, finally, the fifth content is the world map that shows which Risha Kosakai community is the closest to your particular geographical location. This is how the magazine is structured. Now, let's take a tour to each of these five, one by one. So this is the front page of the Living the Lotus, August 2021 issue. They upload the latest issue of the magazine on the first day of each month. So this has nice, as you can see, colorful design with a bit of minimalist inspiration that I like about. And this is the first content, right? The page presents Founders Reflections, titled Nurturing the Mind That Shares the Joy and Sorrows of Others. So let's read it a little bit together. It starts with saying, no matter how many sutras we read, we can't really understand Buddhism by this alone. It isn't until we connect people with the Dharma or work to enhance their connection with it that we truly comprehend the Buddha's teachings. Similarly, if we don't understand people's hearts and share in their feelings, we can't fathom the depth of the Buddha's compassion. So what do you think about this? As an essential Buddhist practice, sutra recitation is important, he's saying, but he's saying, it is not sufficient for you to really understand Buddhism. So he takes up this topic to emphasize on the importance of helping others get connected with Buddhist teachings. But understanding Buddhism further means understanding the Buddha's compassion, which is somehow only known through understanding people's hearts and feelings. That's what he seems to be saying. So this is Nikkyo Niwano's typical move, very down-to-earth, very practical approach to Buddhism. So he's talking about change your perspectives, get out of the habit of rushing into advising people, and instead, he talks about the importance of getting into the mode of understanding and listening to the feelings of the other. This is something we can practice in our everyday life, right? So in a household, in the workplace, friendship, and then any encounter with strangers, or et cetera, et cetera. So his take is very practical, and that's very key to Buddhist practice of understanding Buddhist compassion, he's saying. So how does this essay end? Now you're more curious. But let me not ruin your uh, enjoyable time of reading experience. So if you can, try reading the rest of the essay on your own, and let me know what you think about this in the comments below. A second content appears on the second and the third page of the magazine. The essay title is Sealing the cracks in your mind, 
what does the title evoke to your mind? So this monthly essay normally has two parts. Under his name, for instance, you find the first section is titled, Our Minds Have Both Demons and Buddhas. Oh, this already kind of hints that he will talk about, probably, his take on Buddhism and the Lotus from the viewpoint of recognizing, accepting, and embracing both demon nature and Buddha nature that are equally inherent to all of us. If we can fully embrace both of them, rather than denying or excluding them, especially things like demon nature, right? What kind of Buddhist practice and life-transforming experience may be revealed to us? He explained this in terms of the Buddhist teachings of three poisons. So that's the content of the first half. In the second half, on the next page, you have a title of the second section that says, Words that encourage us to always be diligent. This is where he talks about how to cope with such demon natures in us. The approach he discusses here is Dharani, which is incantation, and how it is interpreted in Risha Kosakai. So let's take a little bit of a closer look. So he says in the second paragraph of that page saying, Dharani is an incantation that has the power when recited to suppress greedy, angry, and self-centered thoughts and activate your inner Buddha mind. So now you wonder, how does this Dharani incantation sound like? If you allow me to do that in Japanese, it sounds like this. So Dharani is trying to get us beyond the world of language, to go beyond the world of the meaning. So it makes us overcome the structure of language, which is words normally refer to particular meanings, right? So words are aimed at pointing to something particular, something particular meanings. So this is where you see a kind of means and relationship, which is the same as the basic desire structure that is problematized in Buddhism, right? So well, but let me stop here, and by reading this Dharma essay, we can learn a lot and discuss it like this. Maybe we can discuss it more, and Dharani will give your thoughts in the comments. So anyways, this is a great Buddhist-inspired conversation starter. So the third content is my favorite, which is an personal Dharma journey. I feel so connected with these storytellers. So this month, Mr. Masashi Nakayama in Japan shares his story. Every month you see a member of RK from Asia, North and South America, Europe, Australia share their story of problem and Buddhist practice. So Mr. Nakayama in this issue of that month, here shares his story of workplace, how he and all other workers didn't like the head of their company first. And then, however, how he started to change the way he looks at that person and transform eventually the company. And he started his own business in a successful way. His business story is based on his great effort of sure, and also practicing the teachings of the Lotus Sutra Buddhism promoted in Risha Kosakai. So very inspiring, very powerful. If you have a chance, or please make a chance and read it. And let me know what you think about this story in the comments below. That'll be amazing conversation starter too. So the fourth is a short reflection essay by the director of Richard Kosaka International. So what is great about this part of the magazine that I like about it is that this director tends to share his reflection on the above-mentioned Dharma essays and so on, and his personal story in his family and workplace, etc., etc. So he's pre pretty good at like making what we are reading so far something even more familiar and easier to practice in our everyday life experience because he demonstrates it in this, because he demonstrates it in his own story. So fifth is a worldwide map that shows how where you can find your own community and contact the closest Dharma Center from where you are. So these are the five things including the magazine, the Living the Lotus. That's what the magazine's got. If you can check this link on the first day of every month you can get in the, the latest version of the, their magazine. However, I have bonus information for you today. 
there's a lot more easier way to get this magazine every month. If you can subscribe to the newsletter of Arkina, Richard Kosika International in North America, and then you will receive this magazine. And so you wouldn't have to check the link every month on your own. And Arkina's newsletter is a great guide for your Buddhist learning. As you can see here, it has a bunch of content, including living learners, messages, seminars, announcements, podcasts, and so on. So this is something you'd never want to miss. Well, I'll be taking you to the tour of their newsletter very soon. All right, that's it. If you haven't yet, please do consider subscribing to this channel, and I'd appreciate your comments and support. Thank you so much.